You've seen the build-up of the flat pack wardrobe, but we're going to slow this clip right down and show you how simple it is to assemble. Now you can see these panels are big and bulky, spread them out so it's much easier to sort them. Group the same panels together. It's then a good idea to make use of some masking tape and a pen to label each panel according to the instruction manual and its numbering system. Panel number one is the top panel and straight away I can see the difference is no holes on the flat side, only has holes on the edge. So I know that's panel number one and straight away I can see the difference between the middle panel and the base panel and how I can identify that is there's small holes on the front edge where the cover strip is one either side and there's one slightly offset on the back. You'll see the third panel doesn't have those holes. So straight away I know that's panel number two, therefore the panel behind it must be panel number seven. We have our two side panels which are panels three and four. Now we have a left hand side and a right hand side. We also have a top and a bottom. We know the holes are based on the top edge whilst the bottom you'll see the holes are offset from the bottom, so I know that is the bottom and that's the top. The panel needs to have the cover strip on the outside and then the covered section would be on the outside while the natural side is going to be on the inside. So this will be panel number three, which is the left hand side, therefore that will be panel number four, which is the right hand side. Coming down to these smaller panels, you can see they're both exactly same size panels. Panels without holes will be panels number 10 and panels with holes, 11. It's now time to open up the other box and we can go through the next set of panels. I find it much easier to label one box at a time just so there's less panels to identify. It makes it so much easier. I have a large panel here which is going to go into the middle section. Straight away I know that's going to be panel number 12. I have these large two panels which straight away I can see it as the doors as it has the recess to accommodate the hinges. So that leaves these last two thin panels. We've got a front panel which is the rail on the front of the unit and then we have one at the back which doesn't have any covering on. So that's going to be panel number five and panel number six. It's now a good idea just to sort your hardware too. I have director screws, shelf pins, wall brackets, 16mm screws, nail panel pins, 30mm screws, wooden dowels, nail and anchors and some cover stickers to cover the heads of the director screws. As for the tool that you're going to need, there's an Allen key that comes in the pack for the director screws. You're also going to need a medium sized Phillips screwdriver and a hammer to knock in the panel pins. With all our panels labelled, our hardware sorted, it's now time to start a little bit of prep work of the panels. Starting on panels 1, 7 and 2, we're going to be popping in dowels in the centre section on both sides of the panel. The next set of panels is panel number 11, in the middle location on both sides. Moving on to panel 5 and 6, you'll see there's two holes. It only takes one plug on the larger hole on either side. The last panel is panel number 12, which is our central divider panel. Two on the top and two on the bottom. With all our panels prepped, it's now time for the fun part, and that's the assembly. I'm going to be assembling this unit face down on a soft, smooth surface. That way it's not going to scratch any of my panels. We're starting off with panel number 12 and panel number 7. We're going to put those two together. you notice that panel number 12 has a top and a bottom. Quick way to identify, you'll notice there's a small hole at the top of panel number 12, and that's to accommodate the rail holder. So line those two up into position and then secure them tight with the director screws and the allen key. Exactly the same for panel number two on the base side. That's our centre structure complete. It's now time to put on our left hand side panel, cover strip on the underside, place it down and locate it into the pre-drilled holes with the dowel pins. Once we've got that into place, secure those edges with the director screws. Now we have panel number five. Remember that's the front panel, so the colour side must go face down. Once that's in, secure the other side with a director screw. When it comes to panel number six, which is the back rail, you'll see you can mount it in exactly the same way as you did the front. But with it hanging over the edge there because it's not supported, it's likely to break or cause damage at this end. So you'll see there are some little location holes. Take your screw and then just drive that into the middle of the panel. That way the load is supported and you're not going to get any damage to the far end of this panel. Then I can secure this end with the director screw. 
With that securely into position, it's now time to move back to the top with panel number one. Now on the back edge of panel number one, you'll see there are some pre-drilled holes. These are to be on the inside of the unit. So keep the cover strip face down and the pre-drilled holes on the inside of the unit. The next panel is the fixed shelf in the middle of the unit here. It's panel number 11, cover edge facing down and secure on the other side with the director screws. Right, with all the internal panels in place, it's now time for the last outside panel. That's the right hand side panel, panel number four. All the structural panels are in, the structure is complete. What I need to do now is whilst it's flying flat, is put my backing board on the top section here. And then drive in the panel pins to secure that to the back of the unit. Remember when you're driving in your panel pins, ensure that it's sitting in the middle of the edge of the wood. That way it's gonna prevent any bursting out the sides. If you go too close to the sides, that nail is gonna to go towards the edge and it's gonna damage that outer surface of that panel. That's the backing board complete. I'm now gonna slide it forward and then gently lift it up into its upright position. Now that the unit is in the upright position, I can pop in the two screws to secure that front rail section. Next, I'm gonna pop in my rail holders and you'll see there are holes already pre-drilled on either side. We can pop in our shelf pins into the pre-drilled holes. This is to accommodate our two floating shelves. Panel number 10, make sure you keep the covered edge on the front side. Right, it's now time to put on our doors. Now the first thing we need to do is insert our hinges into the doors. Pop in the 16 millimeter screws and secure that hinge down tightly. Before you put the doors on, it's a good idea to get the structure into its final location without the excess weight of the doors. When it comes to the doors, they can be quite tricky due to their size and their weight. Make use of a second person to hold it up into position while you align the screws through the hinges into the pre-drilled holes on the sides. Once you've got your first door into position, pop on the second door and then you're going to align and set your hinges to make sure your doors are square, neat and flush all the way around. Just adjust the height of the door with the slotted guides here. When it comes to the fine tuning and alignment of the doors, you'll see there are two screws on the hinges. We have the back screw, which adjusts the door back and forth. And then we have the front screw, which will adjust the gap that you have between the doors and ensure that you have the door square to the structure and to the other door. And screw this screw in as you screw that in, so that will push that hinge towards the other door. Straight away you can see the gap size has changed immediately. I'm more than happy with that gap. All I need to do now is pop on these cover stickers to hide and disguise the ends of these director screws. When you are putting on a sticker, make sure you're putting the grain edge in line with the grain structure on the panel. With the wardrobe in its final position, secure the wall brackets to the wall with the nail and anchors. That's the unit assembly complete that really was simple and easy to do. All that's left to do is to customize the door handles to a handle of your choice. If you enjoyed this clip, like it, share it, you can also subscribe to our Builders Fan YouTube channel. There's a range of DIYs and how-tos just like this for you to be inspired, get to Builders, and get it done.